my god. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Andrew. Um, nice to meet you guys. Uh, this is my second time in Japan. I'm super excited to be here again. Um, every time is too short. Um, anyway, I'm from SF. Um, I'm an indie app developer. Um, but recently, I'm trying to like branch out. Like I've been like doing Swift for like five years. I, I've just been like in enough iOS dev. So anyway, um, I've been trying to learn some more math, more graphics, um, and this is what I'm going to talk to talk to you about today. Um, also, my favorite anime is Steins Gate. Okay. Um, so the motivation is like. Um, how do you make cool graphics? Because like, yeah, yeah, there's like SwiftUI, there's like, um, like shapes, whatever. But like, how do you do stuff like this? Like, let me play this. I saw this on Twitter a while back, and it's it's like insane. Like, how how do you make this right? And um, I had no idea until um, recently. So here's some examples of what you can do with SwiftUI. So the first one is um, by me. And it's basically a bunch of SwiftUI shapes and like perspective transforms. And then like you stitch it together and it becomes like 3D, kind of. Um, so it's like kind of 3D. Um, the second thing is by Paw. I don't know if Paw is here. But yeah, this is like a starry effect. And this is like a timeline view with um, a lot of PNGs. Yeah. But then this third, the third thing is this is um, a shader. And this looks crazy. Um, and like, also, I have no idea how to how to make this in SwiftUI. I'm not sure if it's, if I, it's even possible. Like, maybe some of you guys know how to do this. Anyway, um, and here's some even more crazier examples. This thing on the left, um, made by um, Inigo Clules, which is like one of the best people at this field. Um, and same with this too. So. About like two months ago, I met this guy in SF at some sort of event, and I had no idea who this guy was. But it turns out he's this like insane shader programmer, and he makes these types of um, shaders. Anyway, so today um, I'm gonna try to like show you guys how to do this stuff. It's gonna be an introduction. It's pretty, it's very basic, but um, hopefully you get an understanding of how to make these types of cool effects with Swift. So we start off with shaders. And then we're going to do a fragment-only shader, and then finally do some live coding. So what are shaders? Um, usually, you can divide shaders into two groups, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. And the vertex shader basically defines the mesh of the object. It's like um, a wireframe. So uh, maybe some color, maybe some lighting, but it's basically just like um, defines like the faces. And then to apply color and like lighting effects, use a fragment shader. And the fragment shader basically runs on each face. So the left face, the top face, the right face, for every single pixel, the fragment shader runs. Um, so here's some sample code. For example, this makes a cube. There is um, eight vertices, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. And then, yeah, it's basically like a wireframe. No color, no lighting, nothing. And then to add the color, there's a fragment shader. And then this thing, um, you can see in the code, it goes from blue to teal, and it calculates it based on the x coordinate of the pixel. Um, so you can see the code here. It says for face and mesh, for pixel and mesh dot pixels, um, it's going to call the fragment shader. So this thing, like, it's important. It runs on every single pixel on each face. Um, and yeah, like the bad thing about this technique is like there's like hella code. There's like a lot of code you need to write to combine like the vertex and fragment shader. And it's like a lot of boilerplates. Um, yeah. And then like let's say you want to make like two you want to make two uh, two cubes. How do you do that? I guess you could copy and paste the code. But what if you want to like merge them together and have some sort of like metaball effect? Like that's very hard with vertex shaders because it's like faces. Um, so what we're gonna do today is a fragment only shader. So we're going to do everything in the fragment shader. Um, and how does this work? Um, first, the vertex shader draws one face. Um, that's it. Literally just like a rectangle. And then we have the fragment shader on this face that just like loops through all the pixels. And then this is going to give us our image. Um, 
And like at this point, like you might be thinking, like, how the hell does that work? Like, you just loop through the pixels. Maybe you can make maybe you can make it like blue. You can make it red or something. But like, how do you make a 3D object or stuff like that? Um, so that's that's what we learned today. Okay. So some review. Um, the fragment shader function is called for every single pixel in the face. So you see in here is like a simplified version. Maybe there's like 500 pixels. And for every single pixel, the function is called. And it returns a color. Um, so yeah, that's the main loop logic. And then here, um, it's up to you. You can um, say whatever you want. You can say frac color equals red. It could be equal to green or whatever. Um, yeah, and let's say you want to like draw a solid color. Um, how would you do this? Um, very simple. Um, because this is this fragment shader is called for every single pixel, you literally just return the color for every single pixel, and then the result is the whole thing is orange. And this is a swift orange color. How do you draw a gradient? Um, also pretty simple. You can just check the coordinate. So based on the x coordinate, you could like mix it from zero to one and then it goes from blue all the way to teal. So it's still very simple, and it's like starting to get somewhere. Um, <clears throat> and then how do you draw shapes? Like how do you draw a circle? Um, so some of you guys probably already know this, but um, what you need to do is like use a sine distance function. So this is pretty cool. Basically, you define an SD circle here, and what it does is it takes in a point and takes in a radius. And then it's very simple. It literally just calculates the length of the point, of the point, the vector, and then subtracts the radius. Um, so, so this is a Japan flag, right? But like, like, how does this work? Let, let's, let's pretend, I mean, uh, remember like the fragment shader runs for every single pixel? Um, let's take the pixel in the center for now. So this is zero, zero. Um, so if you put zero, zero, the length of zero, zero is zero. And then zero minus r, um, is going to be negative r. So this is a negative number. And then we make it red. Um, let's say we um, take the edge of the circle on the right. So this could be um, like right here um, on the right side. This pixel value is, um, we can say like 0 0.15, and then um, the y value is 0. So the length of this is 0 0.15. And a 0 0.15 minus 0 0.15 is 0. So therefore, we make it white. So this is the border of the circle. So basically, everything inside the circle is negative. The, the distance is negative. Everything outside is positive. And that's how you can like, make shapes like this. Uh, OK. Now how do you do 3D? Um, yeah, so this is a little bit more complicated. We first start off with a very similar thing a 3D um, sine distance field. But like this thing, um, we need something else. We need ray marching. Um, and this is basically like ray tracing, um, except it's like specialized. Um, it's optimized for sine distance fields. Um, yeah, so 3D sine distance field, basically the same thing. You can see instead of vec2, it's vec3, so 3D. Um, returns the length of the point minus the radius. Um, but now, like, um, you want to like actually like show this on the screen, right? So, what you have to do is for every pixel, you have a camera, and then you draw a ray from the camera to each pixel on the screen, like this, for every single frag, every single pixel. And then here's an example. Let's say we take this pixel right here. We draw a ray through the pixel, and it hits um, it hits the the sphere. Um, and this technique is called ray marching. And what it does is it gives us a distance from the camera to the sphere. Um, it's, it's really just like, it, it's like hit testing. It finds the distance to the sphere. Um, the code is right here. Um, basically, it is like, there's a big loop. Um, it accumulates circles until the distance is small enough that it's basically a contact. Um, and I'm kind of like glossing over it a little bit right here, but um, yeah, this is, this is ray marching. And then <clears throat> once we get the um, distance, we can literally, uh, we can calculate the color at the point. So um, because we have the distance, we can just multiply it by the direction, and then we get the point, um, 0 0.5, 0, 0.6. And then using this point, we can, color, we can calculate like the color 
we can calculate a normal, whatever, and then it shows up on the pixel. Okay, and there's also shadows too. Um, it's like also a similar technique. You also use ray marching. And how it works is like, you start from like the surface, and then you ray march in the direction of the light. And then, because um, ray marching gives you a distance. If the distance um, that's ray marched is smaller than the distance to the light, that means something is blocking it. And that way you can cast a shadow. Yep. Okay, let's do some live coding. Um, and just like also some recap. Uh, usually you write shaders with um, metal or like GLSL. Um, they're basically the same thing. Like you can see the code here. Um, GLSL is like VEC4. Metal says float4. It's like basically the same thing. Um, <coughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of complicated, right? Like I don't really like this syntax. So instead, we're going to use Swift. And now we can write. Um, shaders are swift. Um, this is in beta. I will upload the code for this later today. But as you can see, it's like m much more familiar. Um, you guys don't. You guys know the syntax. Okay, so let's do some live coding. Okay, text. Okay, so we can start with like a very simple example, like before. Let's say we do um, frag color equals um, like this. And what this is going to do is going to make the whole screen the swift color. Because um, remember, the fragment shader is called for every single pixel. And for every pixel, we return the red color. So therefore, the whole thing is red. Very easy. Okay. Now let's do a gradient. Um, um, so here, um, we first do an adjustment. The UV is like a normalizing coordinate. So, because frag cord is from zero to like 600, like the, the length of your viewport. So what you want to do is you want to divide by the um, width of the viewport so you get from zero to one, like normalized coordinates. And then using these coordinates, you can easily um, mix between blue and teal or do whatever you want. And this is a um, gradient. OK, let's do a circle now. So UV0. Um, as you can see, there's like some small differences between the normalization. This is the most common one, probably, where <coughs> zero, 00 is in the center. And then it's 0 0.5 up, 0 0.5 down. So. Um, So here is like the example um, I showed in the slides previously. Um, it makes a circle. SD circle is defined um, elsewhere. And if it's inside the circle, it's red. If it's outside the circle, it's positive. So it's white. OK, so let's do something more fancy. Let's try to um, make the swift bird using um, sign distance fields. So first, I'm going to start with the, um, some logic here. This is a scaling factor. Um, now, <laughs> okay, so um, a vesica is like this shape right here. It's like a kind of like an ellipse, but it's like flattened. So this is the body of the bird. Um, so yeah, let's go over the code. So uh, first, I could get rid of the scaling factor, and it could be um, it's going to be a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, let's keep it here. This is just some boilerplate code um, for later. And yeah. Um, now let's add a tail um, to the bird. So we can do um, right here. So basically now we create a new shape. We create a triangle. And then we subtract the triangle from the main body. So you get this um, cutout effect. Um, and I could tinker with these values. Like for example, I can make this. Um, 0, 0, and it's going to be a bigger um, thing. Or I can make this like um, 0 0.3. It's going to be cut out like even more. But let's keep it at negative 0 0.3. Okay. Um, now let's add the wings. So I'm going to make a moon shape. <coughs> and 
And then basically what this does, this is a union between the um, body and the moon. And I'm going to replace it right here. And you can see it, like, yeah, it looks like the swift bird now. Um, and it's interesting because each of these functions basically returns a float. It returns like a scalar. And this is a distance um, to the shape. So what this means is you can combine these shapes very easily. You can do unions, like um, right here. You can do subtraction. And then, like, this is like, like, for example, I can even make this value right here bigger. And it's going to blend in more smoothly, like if you look like the edges right there. OK. And let's do one more thing. Let's do a rotation effect. Um, This is going to rotate the bird by a little bit. Yeah, and now we have our Swift logo. OK, OK. There's more, there's more. Um, now let's make this 3D with rain marching. So I'm going to make a new fragment shader. Um, apologies for the API. It looks a little bit wonky. Um, basically, I got, I got to the airport at 9 PM, and I was up the whole night just like <laughs> fixing the code. But anyway. So for the distance field, um, we're going to basically copy, <coughs> copy the original right here. Um, this is a shape. And we're going to copy this. And note that um, P this time is provide, provided. So P is a VEC3 in 3D coordinates. So for rotate 2D, we have to only use the XY coordinates right here. OK. And now, um, <coughs> this is still 2D, so let's extrude it. Um, extrude 0. And what this does is it basically takes the 2D shape and just like, like extrudes. And now the distance field is like a 3D distance field. OK. And now for the, <laughs> for, for the fragment shader, um, first, we do the normalizing coordinates, per usual. Um, then um, we do the ray marching. So we create the origin, which is at, um, basically 0, 0, 0. The direction is for each pixel based on the UV values. So we, um, the direction is a ray. It's like a vector. And it points towards each pixel. And then finally, uh, we can do the coloring. Um, and yeah, this gives us the 3D, the 3D bird. <laughs> Um, the coloring, basically, um, this thing right here is to check if the distance is like hitting the bird. Like if it doesn't, it's gonna it's gonna be infinity. So we we color it um, black. So yeah, here it is, our bird. Uh, we could make this orange, maybe like a little bit more yellowish. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Here is our um, 3D bird. OK, so this is um, sign distance fields and ray marching. So obviously, this is very basic. Um, this is a very basic 3D shape. Um, it's nothing like the um, examples I showed in the beginning. But basically, you just use these concepts. Um, you, you like combine these fields, and you can like, like um, un union. You can do like um, subtraction, and you just basically um, keep going until it looks like it looks insane. Uh, so there's lots of more resources to keep going. Um, I think Inigo Colas is probably the best one. He's basically the pioneer of this field. Um, Shader Toy, which is also made by Inigo, has it has like thousands of examples of shaders. Um, and yeah, here are some other cool um, tutorials. So yeah, thanks for listening. Um, I'm a he's zero on Twitter and a he's on GitHub.